Hello, I'm Dennis. That's my crime. It's also my punishment. And I thought we'd do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about video games rather than be playing them while talking. For those interested, the background is Painkiller, Hell and Retribution. Very interesting little FPS game. And for those who give a crap about such things, yes, it's on the Nightmare difficulty. Even if it is the tutorial. <laughs> so... Something came across my feed a little while ago, and I've been meaning to sit down and have at least the pretense of a discussion about it, because despite, at least to me, it coming across as incredibly laughable, quite a few people have at least been attempting to straw man an argument. So, so for the sake of argument, let's talk about it. Are YouTubers stealing content from game developers? Well, I don't think so, but okay. So basically, uh, the creator of Fez, Phil Fish, went online fairly recently and was ranting that people on YouTube who don't share their ad revenue with the game developers are basically pirates. YouTubers should have to pay out a huge portion of their revenue to the developers from which they steal all the content. Ad revenue should be shared with developers. This should be built into YouTube. Anything else is basically piracy. Also, if you generate money from putting my content on your channel, you owe me money. The fact is that someone could buy all of my game, put all of it on YouTube and turn on ads. Of course, this would be a little bit tricky since he has yet to actually make his game because he's infamous for being the guy who threw a huge hissy fit because he wasn't making enough money or whatever. And instead of cancelling development like any reasonable person would who basically has been enough more than they can chew, decided to make a huge song and dance about it and kick up fuss and become generally hated and disliked throughout the entire gaming community. Now, rather than outright dismiss this as the meandering rantings of some guy who's attention has died down recently and he's trying to get more people talking about him and his game which is never going to get made, I'm actually going to take the time to think about what he's saying and whether he's right or not. Do we as Let's Players, and I, you know, include myself in that in the loosest sense possible since really I've only just started this whole thing. Do we owe money? Do we owe anything to these game developers? And I have to admit, I was surprised by the response I got when I asked this question on a couple of my feeds. I actually got from one or two people borderline essays trying to cover every single point and going into great detail. And I'm, I swear I'm going to try my best to summarize this as best I can. But um, the fact that there's even the shell of a debate here is kind of surprising. One of the things that was raised, one of the points that uh, I have to admit is a factor, is the fact that if you know the ending of a story, if you know how everything happens, you are less likely to buy that game or that movie. This is a legit thing, um, and also... Uh, one of the reasons why there are certain Let's Plays I won't actually watch. I'm a big fan of people like, you know, Two Best Friends, and, um, you know, I like some of Markiplier's stuff, too. Um, I think, you know, the guy's entertaining and all that. However, um, when it comes to games like Don't Starve and um, the game that Two Best Friends were doing, uh, the classic I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, I watched the first episode and then I was like, okay, I'm not going to watch anymore. I'm going to freaking buy this game. So, that's the thing. Let's Plays are, when you get right down to it, one of the more honest 
and conclusive kinds of advertising you can get. A let's play is somebody's honest opinion, if it's a good let's play. Yes, you're going to get people who script things and, you know, pretend to, you know, react a certain way at certain things, but, you know, we can tell, you know, and I've been guilty of that in the past with, um, you know, trying to force humour out of something, but you can tell, you know, people aren't that stupid. Maybe there is an argument to be said about the ending being out there, a factor in not buying something. You know, what would happen if Let's Players flat out refused to show the ending to a game that after, you know, several episodes um, leading up to the final chapter of uh, the game or whatever, they basically stop and say, well, if you want to play this game, this is where you do it. If you like the Let's Play and you think it's any good, then go support this company. That is a possible way to go. However, this all depends on whether you've got a good game or not. And... For those of you who are big Nintendo fans, this might come as a bit of a shock to you, but I am not a big fan of Nintendo. I don't own a massive number of their consoles or any of this, that and the other. I have but one piece of Nintendo merchandise, the GameCube. I bought a GameCube for one game only. And that was Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. And the reason I bought that game, and the reason I bought that console to play the game, is because I sat down and I watched the entire Let's Play that Two Best Friends did. So, the argument that Let's Play's harm sales is pretty ridiculous and there's about 10,000 other examples I could give but I think I'm just going to rely on one. Minecraft. Do you honestly think Minecraft would be the insanely huge thing it is now if it weren't for YouTube and word of mouth? Viral advertising done by the players. Seriously. What it's all coming down to is the fact that certain game developers like Phil Fish basically are unhappy that work that they've put a lot of time and effort into over a course of years usually is being used by somebody else to make money money that they are not seeing any of, except they are. They've already had their percentage. They've already had their cut of our money because we bought the game. We've already paid for it. We don't owe you anything else except our honest response. That's the point of a let's play. It's an honest response. It's a reaction. We sit down and we experience the thing that you made for us and we share that experience with others so they can go out and either get your game themselves or, and here's the kicker, they can avoid it. And that's the problem. If you make a shitty game, then people are not going to buy it. I'm not saying that your games are good or shitty, because I've never played Pez. I don't really have any intention to. What footage I've seen of it doesn't really look like my kind of game. And that's the thing. I've seen footage of your game, I've seen someone play it, and it just didn't seem that interesting to me. And that, I think, 
just my opinion, I think that may have a tiny thing to do with your dislike of Let's Plays in general. However, one of the things that kind of surprised me that came across my feed in the responses was the fact that someone basically compared my work, which was recently stolen, along with many other people on DeviantArt, and posted on another person's website as being the same thing. And the fact that because I was really upset that my work had been stolen uh, without my permission and was being used um, in a way that was not originally intended, and yet I was making Let's Plays and arguing against this whole thing, I was a bit of a hypocrite. And the, basically, no, there's a difference. I'm not charging for my work. My artwork already exists. It's already out there. Does that mean that you can just take my work and stick it on your own website? No, it's just a simple case of permission. The thing I'm in reference to is Hippo Paint, where this person basically mass copied pretty much all of DeviantArt, or at least all the black and white artwork on DeviantArt, and stuck it up there for people to print off and colour in. Okay. Having my art removed and edited and placed in another different context is not the same thing as a Let's Play. I can see the straw man argument where you could say that a let's play is taking something that already exists and is editing it and pay posting it in a different place but that's a very very flimsy argument because the fact is as i've already said the let's play is obviously not featuring work that i've done I didn't make this game. Everybody with a brain can see that. I'm not removing all the information about the publisher and everything. Everybody knows the name of the game I'm playing. Everybody knows where to get it. And those who don't, Google. It's very, very simple. The whole point of a Let's Play is to promote something that already exists. Art theft is the appropriation of something that already exists to remove all distinguishing marks and to claim that you have ownership. And that's a point, actually. Ownership. Do we own games? because we pay money for them. I think we have the right to play the game. I think we have the right to share our experience of playing the game. Do we have the right to make money from playing the game? I think we do, because what we're doing when you get right down to it, is we are advertising this game. We are honestly advertising this game. We have already paid money to advertise this game. We don't own you any more of our ad revenue. We don't owe you anything else except Honesty, you've already got our money, we've already paid you, and we are basically, in our free times, taking up a lot of our free time and a lot of work and a lot of effort to share with the world our honest reaction to your game. And you're trying to make the argument that we owe you more for doing this. No. 
We don't. We really, really don't. So, at the end of the day, that's just my opinion. I can't speak for other people. You may feel entirely differently than what I do. And if you do, I'm, I'm honestly interested to hear your counter-argument to this. At the end of the day, I will freely hold up my hand and say my opinion isn't say exactly unbiased because I want to make money from doing this. You know, who doesn't want to make money doing something they enjoy? I'm enjoying my hobby, I'm sharing it with the world, and getting some money out of it would be nice. But at the end of the day, I've said everything I'm going to say on the matter. I'm just honestly curious what you guys feel about it. Thank you all for watching, and it would be remiss of me to not mention that uh, Painkiller and Retribution is a fairly interesting game. It's a run gun FPS, very retro, very enjoyable, a little bit tricky, but uh, worth your time. There you go, another free advertisement. Also, it's pretty cheap. Go get it.